Hey, I'm Jens and welcome on my YouTube channel Happy Mushrooms. Today I'm going to share everything I know about how to build a cheap DIY laminar flow hood. I'm going to share everything I know, how to build this thing, how what kind of information you need to collect before think of planning a laminar flow hood like this so that you'll be able to build your own laminar flow hood matching your personal needs. Let's go. The first thing we have to ask ourselves is actually how big shall our laminar float at the end be? And that is very important because when we yeah, double the size of the laminar float, we need a lot more power to push the air through the filter. And more power means that it will be a lot more expensive at the end. So if you just plan to work uh, with agar and petri dishes, of course we can build it a lot cheaper. But when you also think of your inoculating spawn, you need to think how big shall the filter the setup at the end actually be so that you'll be satisfied when working like this. So for this size of bag, this seems to be actually a pretty too small, but I lift it up like 10 centimeters so I have a lot more space to work and for this bag size, it's totally fine. When you want to get 100% sure that there are no contaminations possible during inoculation, there are actually just two filters which were great at, for this kind of setup. And that is a HEPA 13 and a HEPA 14 filter. The 14 filter filters 10 times more than the 13, but actually both work pretty good. I have ordered a HEPA 14 just to get sure. Before we're gonna talk about the fan I've used for the setup, we need to take a closer look on the individual parameters of those filters because that is very important when you decide what kind of fan you think of buying for your individual system. Let's take, for example, this H30 HEPA filter. Most company offer a couple of parameters which we now take a closer look on. And that is, of course, the size and the rated airflow. The bigger the filter, the more airflow is required. We need a fast airflow which blows away all the particles. Let me just demonstrate that. So the same amount of air coming from the fan goes through the filter. So the bigger the filter, the more air is required to reach those flow speeds. And the second parameter, which is very important, is the initial resistance. Now let's take a look on some fans. This is a little more expensive than the one I used, but I think it's a pretty good example. Let's say the initial resistance of your filter is 250. This means that this fan or the bigger fan we've just seen on Amazon produces 750 cubic meters per hour. For this filter 280 cubic meters per hour are required so the fan on Amazon would deliver three times the airflow required. So for this fan we could use a HEPA filter with a double size or the other way around we could buy a much cheaper fan like this one. But what if the diagram especially of the cheap fans is missing? This one is actually built to run bouncy castles, but I think it was a good choice. It's made of plastic, of course, just the housing is made of plastic, which made it a little cheaper, but also very strong. It produces 680 cubic meters per hour, which is three times or almost three times the amount of airflow needed to run this HEPA filter. Of course, because of the pressure drop, like 50% of the airflow is gone and this produces like 300 to 400 cubic meters per hour, which is totally enough to work with the system as you just seen with the lighter test. So when the diagram is missing and you know that the airdrop of the HEPA filter is like 200 to 250, you can calculate with 50% of the airflow is gone. So even when the only parameter available is the airflow without a filter, you can calculate all the needed parameters you need to decide if this setup is working for you. Therefore, I've brought some calculation examples to make it easier for you to take the right decision. Of course, I'm gonna link all the parts I've used to build my own laminar flow hood for you in the description. I really hope that I could give you a good overview what is needed, what parameters are important when you want to build your own laminar flow hood because it would be really frustrating when you build your own box 
and then you realize that the airflow, the airspeed is not fast enough and you still risk contamination after spending some money on a setup like this. So in the next video, I'm gonna give you some tips and show you how I actually built this box, this laminar flow hood to make it work and show you how I do not risk any contamination anymore. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you on the next.